Now, the great thing that I love about these Panasonic Clippers, the GP80s, is that you have this dial here, okay? Which is very different and actually makes your life easier. Because again, with the actual dial itself, you can actually hear it click. So you can start to hear the segments and you can start to understand the length that you're working towards. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to remove some of this bulk and weight from the underneath. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the underneath and we're gonna start to work against the directional growth of the hair. You can see here what I'm doing is I'm just leaving myself a small little gap on the curvature of the head. It's gonna allow me to do two things. I can either scissor over comb to connect it through towards the curvature of the head, or if I wanted to, I can clip her over comb to connect it to the curvature of the head. The great thing with these clippers is you have consistent power. Okay, the clippers itself won't run out of charge and slow down in power. You know, and that's the great thing that I love about these clippers is that when they're actually running out of charge, they start to blink. So you know straight away that you need to charge them or use another set of clippers. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to work with the phasing technique, okay, throughout the sides and the back. Now we're gonna start to work with the GP21s, okay, which is the neck trimmers. What we can see here is our trimmers have got finer teeth, so it's gonna cut hair to a shorter length. But with our trimmers itself, we're working to a fixed length, okay? Again, the teeth are a lot more finer, so it's gonna cut hair to the shortest length that we can cut it towards. Again, just working with the clippers, we're gonna work at a slight angle, and we're just gonna create myself the guide, which is gonna be the shortest point. Again, we're just gonna work the clippers horizontally, and we're just gonna gently tap the area where we want that zero just to lay and where we want it to stand. So again, just ever so slightly, just tapping the initial line. Again, I'm not pressing too hard. If you press too hard, you're gonna create too much of a line in this step, and it's harder to get that and actually remove that line itself. Again, once we've done that, we're gonna do exactly the same on the opposite side. So again, working at a slight diagonal, now, once we've done that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip back towards working with our main clippers. So again, working with the 0.5, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create myself another guideline, which again, how I like to look at things, is gonna be about the same width as my finger, depending on the uh, density of the hair, and depending if it's gonna be dark hair or if it's gonna be lighter hair. So when you're working with fades, is the momentum of your actual wrist, okay? If I worked up with the clippers and stopped, you're just gonna create yourself a harsh line. So it's easier to work up with the clippers and ever so slightly just flick it through. We're now gonna start to work with the number one. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna create myself another guideline. So again, the next guideline, again, is gonna be about the equivalent of your finger again. So what we're gonna do now, we've worked with a one and a half. We're gonna adjust our dial so we're working to a close. So we're now to a true natural number one. So just by stretching from the underneath, using the corner of the clipper, you're literally just trying to soften that initial weight line that I created. Now, how we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna work with no guard now. So again, working with no guard, we're gonna start with the clipper open. So starting with the clipper open, again, we're working to the hair to the longest length. So we're working to a 0.5. And again, you can see here, just consistently combing and brushing the hair through so I can clearly see what's been cut and what hasn't been cut. So again, you know, when you're working with fading techniques, you know, it really is about all these small little imperfections. You know, it's really paying attention to detail these small little areas. So just taking that step back just to make sure that we've got that smooth transition between short and long. Obviously working the same on the opposite sides. Exact same steps again, we're working with the clipper open. And again, starting to adjust it through and starting to cut it down towards a shorter length working closer and closer towards that initial zero which we created with the neck trimmers until it starts to disappear and then we get a smooth transition and we're going to work a little bit of clipper over comb just on the certain areas that are slightly darker just to get more of a smoother transition so again we're just working with the wider part of our comb and those key areas that are slightly darker we're literally just going to start to soften those areas through Again, by using the corner of the clipper, okay, we can start to create a nice little arch. Just so it's a little bit more cleaner, just around that curvature of the head. And then again, we can start to work just towards the perimeter outline. And again, just working just with the corner of the clipper, just to create that nice little arch. And just 
feeling that just around that perimeter outline area. You know, again, obviously just detailing these areas here on the curvature, just around the front area, it's all personal preference behind if you want to work with that, okay? 